Over the course of the two decade long run of the film series, there have been a number of deleted scenes cut from the final versions of all five of the films that have never been seen by any audience member whatsoever. Some of these scenes have been legendary pieces of movie material that many of us would do anything to get to see someday. Others actually aren't even that well known to the wider fandom and always come as a shock among those that had never heard of them before. In this video, I wanted to go over five of them that I think fans would love to see more than any others in the entire saga. Now the criteria for this list is specifically deleted scenes from these movies that no audience member has ever seen before with their own eyes. Confirmation of the scene being filmed through a still image of some kind is what I consider to be the hard proof that we have in knowing that a scene was shot and was going to be in a movie. So as much as I'm interested in seeing what the rumored raptor versus ankylosaurus scene would have been like, and as much as I like the Roland Tembo bar fight scene from The Lost World, neither of those meets the criteria that I've set out for this specific list. Two great things that a lot of people worked hard on for sure, but sorry, you're not going to see them here. And with that being said, I think it's best to go ahead and begin. These are the top five Jurassic Park deleted scenes that we never got to see. Number five, why the Triceratops was sick. Now all the way back in the first Jurassic Park, we get to witness an incredibly realistic looking animatronic Triceratops. Well that same Triceratops is said to have fallen ill recently to some kind of sickness. While we're never told on screen what was actually wrong with the animal, several fans and audience members have long believed that what ailed the dinosaur was the simple fact that it was pregnant. I'm going to assume that this theory stems from the revelation of the dinosaurs having been revealed to have the capacity for breeding later on in the movie, but nevertheless, that's actually not the real answer as to why we have a sick trike in the first movie. In reality, the reason this dinosaur was sick was because it had actually swallowed gizzard stones, which are small rocks that birds and dinosaurs would have used to digest their food once they'd eaten it. Every six weeks, the trikes would swallow these little stones and accidentally eat the poisonous West Indian lilac berries that the stones were next to during this time. Images of Alan, Ellie, and Tim discovering the stones can be found in behind the scenes material for the movie, and in the final release, you can actually see all three of them holding the smooth stones at the exact moment the storm hits. In all honesty, I kind of would have liked if they'd kept this scene in the final cut of the film. It doesn't really add anything to the story, and it wouldn't have been necessary, but hey, it would have been more dinosaur facts that kids could have picked up on along the way, which is always a good thing. Number four, Nick Van Owen and Gambler's Ruin. This is a scene, or really a collection of scenes, that would have further fleshed out our characters' perspectives during the camp sabotage in the Lost World. Originally, in one of the final script revisions for the film, Ian Malcolm would go out of his way to tell the others that they shouldn't interfere with Peter Ludlow's dinosaur harvest. His exact dialogue would have adapted something from the Michael Crichton novel and foreshadowed events that were about to happen. Malcolm states that they are teetering on the brink of a very unstable situation called Gambler's Ruin a statistical phenomenon that states that everything goes wrong in streaks. Once things go bad, they tend to stay bad. Bad things cluster and they all go to hell together. This would of course be followed by Ian and Kelly going off to the trailers, which is in the final cut. But it would also detail Nick and Sarah's further sabotage on the Hunter vehicles. Photographic evidence of Nick's involvement in cutting the fuel lines of the Hunter's motorcycles, jeeps, and other equipment was trimmed from the movie, and Sarah Harding's participation in sneaking around the camp was also reduced considerably. This would have explained why one of the Hunter jeeps explodes during the following scene in which Roland and Ajay have to jump out of a nearby tree. Personally, I would have loved to have this scene in the final cut, but unfortunately, we didn't get that at all really, and at this point, it's unlikely that we ever will. Number three. Udeski versus the Raptors. Now, nobody knows exactly how long or extensive this particular scene was, but it did in fact exist because it was filmed for Jurassic Park 3. You see, originally Udeski wouldn't actually be revealed to just having fallen to the ground in some unexplained way in the movie. And he was actually supposed to pick up a large branch and fight back against the Velociraptors before they set their trap and killed him. 
The image of Udesky holding up a piece of wood preparing to swing at his attackers is something that's really fascinated me for quite some time now. And while I'm not sure how long he would have fought back or if he would have even landed a hit, I gotta say I really do want to see how this was originally shot for the film. I honestly don't know why they cut this out of the movie because it really doesn't seem like it would have lasted too long. Going off of what we've seen in the final cut anyways, but who knows. Again, I have to say that whatever deleted footage for JP3 is out there really kind of fascinates me. The possibilities of what different versions of the film were being prepared while the script was being rewritten pop up in my head a lot while scripting videos. Just imagine what got left on the third film's cutting room floor. There's got to be something in there worth showing. Number two, the death of Iris. And this is definitely a cut that I think should have appeared in the movie 100%. There is indeed an explanation to why Iris leaves the third act of the film, and while I don't think she was a character that necessarily needed to be in the whole thing, I do think showing her get mercilessly killed by the Indoraptor would have been one hell of an incredible moment. I first heard of this deleted scene around the time the movie came out when Jurassic Park Panama sent me an audio recording of his interview with Geraldine Chaplin earlier that year. Nice to meet you. I'm from Jurassic Park, Panama. I'm a fan. So I know that you're a part of Jurassic World. Yes. So I'm, I'm, did you get to see the animatronics of the dinosaurs? Some of them, yeah, some of them. Did you work with the dinosaur itself, or you weren't no. part of that? No, they put the dinosaur in afterwards. Oh. I get killed by the biggest one. Oh, really? That's great. <laughs> And I gotta say, actually seeing the image of her bravely attempting to defend Maisie while the Indoraptor barges after her has stuck with me ever since. Just think, man, we could have had another Eddie Carr-style death. A moment a, quote, good guy bites the dust in order to save the people they care for. Wow. They really gotta get rid of the whole no good guys die bullshit. I, I hate that idea. And number one, how the baby T-Rex broke its leg. Yep, this is the one that I'm sure most of us would have loved to have seen more than any of the others. Originally, Roland Timbo and Peter Ludlow were supposed to show the audience how different they both were with a good old-fashioned conversation that compared the two hunters' philosophies. And while Ludlow was drunkenly moving around the captured baby T-Rex, a small animal in the bushes startles him and he falls directly on the infant Tyrannosaur's leg, snapping it in half instantly. This made Roland furious with anger and Ludlow simply brushed it off as if it didn't matter in the grand scheme of things. To him, the baby's life was nearly the means to an end. All he wanted was to start up Jurassic Park back in San Diego. Who cares if it got hurt in the process? David Kep has gone on record to say that this is the scene that he was most heartbroken about getting cut from the film. To him, and me as well, this scene is vital to understanding the poetic justice and revenge that plays out at the end of the film when the father Rex snaps Ludlow's leg in the SS Venture and urges its infant to lunge at the tiny human for its first kill. Had this scene been in the movie, I think it would have made the second Jurassic movie just a little bit better and delivered an ending with a lot more of a punch. But what do all of you guys think? What are your favorite deleted scenes that we have photographic evidence of, but have never seen any footage of either? Which ones do you think we deserve to see in the future? Whatever your thoughts and opinions may be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I want to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I seriously am extremely thankful for everything that you guys do to help. Honestly, it means the world. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you on the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.